Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, depending on, on where, where you are. My name is Daniel Mordiarzo. I am a principal scientist at C4. Would like to bring to you this uh, second webinar on the exploring criteria and indicator for peatland restoration. And um, well, in this very opportunity, I would like to wish you all well, happy and certainly healthy in this very difficult situation, very, very prolonged uh, pandemic. Let me also take this opportunity to thank to our speakers, our resource persons uh, who are making themselves available for this very important session and also trying to reach most of you who are um, not in the first webinar because uh, today we will be speaking very specifically about biophysical and also fire um, parameters in order to find out what would be the criteria and indicators for pitland restoration. I would also like to, to thank to you all as participants. So I believe your interaction contribution in this uh, conversation will be very much uh, useful and expected because from your experience, we believe that we will learn something so that this uh, webinar will be a kind of interactive uh, session between us at the background here and you and the other places so that we, we will extract uh, very, very useful and important lessons uh, that we are going to learn today. On behalf of the organizer, I would also like to, to thank the uh, supporting institution, including USAID, the Embassy of Norway, the NICFI, uh, FAO, UNEP, and also GPI, Global Pitland Initiative, so that this uh, webinar, which is about Indonesian pitland, will also have the notion of international importance because we believe that pitland is globally significant in contributing to stabilize the world climate. So we, we're trying to, to look at this into more detail. And we also realize that pitlands are facing tremendous pressure to maintain the services they can provide for human well-being. Indonesian ambition to restore more than 2 million hectares of degraded peatland poses a huge challenge to evaluate the results towards the end of its first five year, or the, they call it initial phase. So uh, as we think that a set of criteria and indicators, CNI for short, following a fundamental principle need to be developed and validated. So as I said, this is the, the second uh, webinar because in the first one, we were exploring various aspects, including the aspect that we are going to discuss today and try to set the scene of what would be the, the following webinar structure. And today we are specializing, uh, looking at the biophysical and, and fire aspect, identifying the importance criteria and indicators. And next month we are expecting to have rather different kind of issues, but we would like to have them together and validate them before we can synthesize uh, towards the end of this year. So today we will have a very uh, fruitful, I believe, uh, session, two hour session, um, just to capture what we've been doing in the first webinar. Um, in the opening session, I would like to welcome Dr. Harris Gunawan, the deputy uh, of the Pit Restoration Agency to welcome you all and uh, address you and also update us with what happened in the last webinar. So we will have a, a report, a summary of the last webinar to, for you to catch up. And then we will have a keynote speaker who is going to uh, speak to us about the importance of the principle in the criteria and indicator. Uh, I will introduce him later. 
but uh, the more technical and technological issues related uh, will be in the first and second session where we are going to hear more about biophysical parameters and, and also um, example from the field, how to do this and how to evaluate and monitor this. Excuse me to, to close my door. I think I'm competing with somebody else. <laughs> Sorry about that. Anyway, so this is work from home. <laughs> um, at the end of the session, we will have also um, discussion about how to bring together this biophysical attributes and fire into part of the criteria and indicator that we are going to validate uh, in the future. So um, with that in mind, um, we are expecting to learn how set of validated criteria and indicator to be monitored in the future and use that as peatland restoration uh, kind of tool to, to, to measure whether it's successful, fail, or need to be improved, etc. Um, we also expect that this webinar and the series uh, ahead of us will be a session where we can exchange our knowledge. So truly, we really expect this to happen today and, and also in the next uh, webinar so that we can enrich what we are discussing today. So that's what I would like to introduce to you. And again, uh, thank you for your participation. Uh, I believe uh, you've been waiting for this among others webinar that are happening today on this week. So we look forward to have you uh, interacting in this uh, session. So without further ado, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Harris Gunawan to uh, address you and, and also update us to, about what's happened in the last webinar in September. But Harris? Yeah. Thank you, uh, Professor Daniel. Mudiarsa, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. Where you are, no? So, as my Prof. Daniel introduced me, I am Haris Gunawan. Deputy Research and Development for Pitland Restoration Agency, Republic of Indonesia. I will give a short speech and opening for uh, this um, workshop. So I'm happy uh, to join in this, uh, of course, uh, discussion and uh, for all of speaker, I saw that there are some speaker, very prominent speaker, and I mentioned here uh, Dr. Ravi, Dr. Matt Reed, Dr. Crystal, Professor Gustian Sari, Dr. Muhammad Taufik, and uh, Dr. Uh, Solihin. And, and also, I think uh, I would like also want to say thank you for the organizing committee. Uh, Pak Rupes and the others uh, team to be good uh, prepare for this uh, uh, event. And all, all of the participants, ladies and gentlemen, on this happy occasion, we are being brought together again to discuss about the criteria and indicator for tropical peatland restoration. So in the previous or the first hour uh, discussion, so I, uh, I mean that peatland restoration agency mentioned about the, if we talk about restoration, so the very important in the uh, 
biophysical bio uh, indicators or criteria we call the all about the peatland must wet. Restore peatland is ultimately aim to reach the re-wet peatland as it is the criterion. Otherwise, restoration is mean at the middle rank or rehabilitation. Obtain, obtaining wet peatland is the only way to save the natural resources for our well-being as human. In terms of climate change, our climate is changing. I, I can I a long time ago. Warmer era is good for us, but no, how much warm the earth for us to, to stand? Besides, high water holding capacity of the natural or maybe later restore pitland is a solution for the increasing scarcity of water globally. So besides holding carbon, we also hold hook amount of water water through to preserve in peatland, especially in tropical peatland in Indonesia. Here we suggest that there are four uh, pillar as I mentioned in the, my uh, presentation in the first uh, uh, wrap up uh, discussion. So in determining criteria and indicator pitland restoration, four pillar must be considered including biophysical, social, economic, and governance. This four pillar must be equally recognized to guarantee permanent pit restoration. It is important to note that the criteria and indicator here shall be considered as well in the immediate term, middle rank, and the long rank of mean uh, we call the permanent. When we will have one that tropical peatland is permanently restored restore hydro, hydro, hydrologically and ecologically healthy and supportive for ecosystem services for human well-being and it is pit must wet. Based on the criteria and indicator for peatland ecosystem degradation on uh, uh, government regulation number uh, 71 2014 junto number uh, 57 num 2016 degradation is indicated by the presence of artificial drainage deal of pitland ecosystem second expose of period of quad sediment under the pit layer and reduction in the land cover in the pitland ecosystem. Those are all for pitland classified in protected forest. The question is, have we found those criteria in pitland with protected uh, function? Furthermore, in pitland with the cultivation function, degradation is indicated by water level lower than 40 centimeter, exposed of a period of quad sediment under the pit layer. The same question have you found that criteria in pit land in cultivation function zone? Yes. If so, those are all degraded pit land. How wide? It is called the overall figure of our tropical pit land indeed. BRG is modality for restoration and indeed has developed, developed De de develop uh, tremendous uh, modalities. The pit land has, the president has declared that pit must be wet, whatever it takes. Therefore, BRG with a rewetting program has explored how to restore water balance in the pit land area. BRG has been working toward restore pit land. Thousands of rewetting infrastructure, development agro-silvo fishery, Palu di Carter, all our water 
best management as as well as the criteria and indicator are very important and must be established whole, holistically to support peatland restoration in Indonesia. The previous webinar discussed the criteria, uh, the, 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 the crucial point, the, this criteria and indicator in ensuring sustainable peatland restoration. Ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, what are the way forward we are going to? Key issue to support criteria and indicator for peatland restoration from previous webinar, including peatland hydrological unit is, is has high variability socially and bio, biophysically. Approach are not generic. Second, in peatland restoration, without ignoring the social variability and governance need, it is crucial to restore peatland biophysically. Closing the gap to we need precise peatland map as the tool for the planning and monitoring restoration indicator are achieved. Besides, we need to establish new economic uh, paradigm. I conclusion my opening remark. I hope this webinar will be fruitful for development of criteria and indicator of peatland restoration. Gathering in this seminar is scientific engagement to work together for peatland restoration based on the scientific base. So enjoy for uh, the take webinar. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon. Thank you, Pak Haris Gunawan, Deputy Head of Pit Restoration Agency, BRG, uh, for research and development, for giving us the advice and lay the, the way ahead of us, uh, in addition to what you've been wrapped up for the last, about the last webinar. So I think, I believe that, that the participants are also updated with what happened last in the last webinar. And thank you for uh, laying ahead uh, the possible topic and issue that we are going to cover in the next webinar. So our next speaker will be Dr. Ravi Prabhu. Uh, Ravi is the Director for Innovation, Investment and Impact. We call it 3i of c 4 Craft. Ravi has been uh, working on this topic. I think it's more than two decades ago, and uh, we will be learning from him, his legacy about principal criteria and indicator, how to, to use this for an adaptive kind of management for natural resources. Ravi. Um, thank you very much, Daniel. And uh, also many thanks to Paharis for an inspiring talk. Uh, I'm going to switch off my video shortly because we have uh, uh, bandwidth problems over here. I've been having them all day, but I just wanted to greet everybody. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's my great pleasure to speak to you about um, something that uh, I was engaged in, as uh, uh, Pa Daniel said, a long, long time ago. Uh, <laughs> I guess uh, uh, Daniel is uh, somebody who respects history um, and respects old people. So he's got an old person to talk about history. So let me try and uh, give you a perspective uh, from my own uh, research and experience um, about why principles, criteria, and indicators uh, are simply a means, um, a tool by which to adaptively manage natural resources. Can we go to the next slide, please? So I have five core messages. Um, and if you wanted to go to sleep after this, you would not miss very much. Um, as I said, uh, principles, criteria, and indicators are tools. So focus on being good enough. Don't try and be perfect. It's really important uh, as you develop your criteria, indicators, and principles to consider who matters most in the landscapes uh, that you're dealing with in these peat landscapes. Consider the value of information, and that is the cost, both of getting the information, but also the intrinsic value of the information in uh, helping you to understand what it is you want to achieve. 
and above all, try and be practical. Those are my core messages. Uh, can we get to the next slide, please? So the work that uh, Bart Daniel uh, generously referred to took place uh, from between 1994 and 1999, um, developed uh, a, an indicator toolbox, uh, lots of publications. The first one is this white one on testing criteria and indicators, which sort of um, set a lot of wheels in motion. Those wheels continued in motion, as you can see, COFO, um, as recently as 2016, was still considering uh, criterion indicators. And in preparing for this talk, I was very pleased to see that Wikipedia now has a criterion indicators of sustainable forest management page. Well, I, when I started, Wikipedia was hardly hardly there. So you can see uh, this is probably, you know, criterion indicators started uh, uh, a few years BW before Wikipedia. Next slide, please. So what are we aiming to do with these principles, criteria, and indicators? Are we aiming to change behavior, affirm good behavior where it takes place? Probably both, I think. Are we trying to promote learning and preferably structured learning? Uh, and that perhaps is the biggest insight that we had from our, our work, that if we can help people to learn and learn faster in a more structured way, we were doing well. So people are the key to everything, and we must focus on them. Then I would like to uh, suggest that principles, criteria, and indicators that are not linked to a theory of change, how we want to change something. And, you know, uh, Paharis already mentioned, uh, you know, the president's uh, view on the principle that uh, peatlands have to be wet. So, so that's one part of the theory of change. There are probably others who's going to benefit, et cetera, and how. So we need to have this theory of change um, because without which we are unlikely to succeed in drive, driving the transformational learning and adaptive management that we want. For a theory of change to be useful, it must be accompanied by a theory of context or place. That, that is, we must explicitly take into account the particular peat landscape that we're dealing with, the stakeholders there, etc. And finally, if the uh, uh, principles, criteria, and indicators are to be successful, over time, we might find the initial theories that we had about what works and what doesn't work will need to change. And, and so we have to look at it even uh, um, in a research sort of a mode where we are uh, prepared to test the ideas that we have and throw them out if we don't uh, find them successful. And the PCI should help us in this regard. Next slide, please. So, one of the principal aims, obviously, is on evaluation and assessment. And in this regard, I would want you to focus on the principles and criteria, not the end, as endpoints that reflect our collective wisdom about what we want as outcomes in the principles and our knowledge about how to get there in the criteria. Indicators, then, are the actual information tools. And here we should be practical and we make, should make certain that they're repeatable and affordable. They must reflect and be relevant to specific contexts. Where they are not uh, um, uh, relevant to the context, where they're not affordable, they can cost end up costing you so much time and money that uh, is better used in actual implementation of activities rather than in the monitoring, evaluation, and assessment. So in the end, even as you apply your PC and I, be sure that the guidance that you provide to people is clear, feasible, and leads to repeatable results. This essentially means you have to test with people who are actually going to be carrying out the assessments, how uh, well they understand your instructions. Uh, we have in the past made mistakes in this regard. Um, and actually in Kalimantan, we ran a test of certification organizations just to see um, how repeatable things were and got some very useful feedback from them about what is feasible, what is affordable, etc. Right at the bottom of this information pyramid of principles, criteria, and indicators are the data points that we are going to uh, consider um, in order to get uh, the whole um, system working. And here we do need to consider how we're going to collect them, who's going to do this, 
Is this going to be done by citizen science? Is this going to be done by experts? Is this going to be done by auditors? Is it going to be done by local officials? Um, and accordingly uh, develop the protocols for this. How are they going to be analyzed? What are the systems? Are you going to use a smartphone based ODK system or are you going to use, you know, old fashioned paper and pen? How are they going to be archived? Because somebody might at some stage challenge uh, an assessment and want to see the data. Um, and so you have to consider this. When we were working on this, we considered the principles, criteria, indicators, and data to be linked to the four entities in information theory. And those four entities in information theory, which uh, drives a lot of what we're doing today, are wisdom, knowledge, information, and data. And you can look them up because they are mathematically defined. Next slide, please. Perhaps the most important use uh, of the criteria and indicators for sustainable forest management that we developed and, you know, subsequently we've been working on land degradation indicators, etc., is communication. Explaining to people what exactly it is we're trying to achieve. Because often when we say something like sustainability or we talk about restoration, it means different things to different people. So when you can be quite explicit about what it is you mean, and have a negotiation around that, it is extremely helpful. And that is why criteria indicators have been very effective communication tools for determining policy, changing regulations, getting consensus, resolving conflicts, whether at a community level or at a district level or at a province level, or indeed at global level, um, the criteria indicators uh, tools have been most important for communication. So do be aware of this and make certain that you can communicate based on this. Don't end up trying to make something that is science and scientific that is not necessarily science. The aim of the indicator is to indicate. It is not to be the precise uh, research tool or lab tool that gives you the exact information. It is to give you an indication, just as um, a, an impressionist painting gives you an impression of what is happening and catches the mood, it is supposed to help to do that. And no indicator on its own will do this. It will only do this in conjunction with others. So therefore, just enough is the correct amount of detail. Don't try to do more than that. I like to think of indicators, a set of indicators as a table of contents. When I pick up a book and I read the table of contents, I should be, have a pretty good understanding of what the book is about. In fact, when I was doing my PhD, my supervisor said to me, if I can't understand what your PhD is about on the table of contents, don't bother to come and show it to me. So this has been a guiding light for me um, tell your story as clearly as possible using your PC and I, and then the details can come uh, later. The last point I would advocate in communication is consider your audience. Whom are you talking to? Are we talking to technical people and policymakers who have a un deeper understanding? Are we talking to local people? Are we indeed talking to the general public? And accordingly, you will have to um, develop the messages around those indicators that you have developed. Next slide, please. So the last major point I'd like to make is think about, we are on a Zoom seminar and you know I would want you to think not just on the Zoom as this, this technical tool, but zooming through scales of biophysical space and temporal space, time. Everything that we do in any peat landscape and you are really understanding this is history dependent. So we know history affects what's happening today. And what happens today will affect tomorrow. So our PCI must be uh, cognizant of the fact that nothing, we're not just interested in snapshots of the present, but we're interested in what are we learning from the past to inform the future? That's the temporal scale. In terms of biophysical scales, things look different depending on where you are. Um, People like us sort of floating in cyberspace look down on a peat landscape and see different things to those who are actually farming in that landscape or hunting in that landscape or indeed trying to restore that landscape. So we have to be able to zoom from one scale to the other and the indicators have to be relevant. Certainly the principle and criteria have to be relevant 
the indicators uh, should be more or less data points, however, can change depending on what you're looking for. So just be aware of this need for to zoom in and out of different spatial and temporal scales. Next slide, please. And from this uh, fossil from the past, here are some concluding remarks. Science, although important, and I am, and many here are, but more important is utility. So think about that. There is a huge literature and experience on developing principles, criteria, and indicators. Don't just apply that. Be prepared to innovate um, and, and push the boundaries of what is possible because what the literature tells you, and I use the illustration of Wikipedia, um, but also, you know, when we look at remote sensing tools, who were available to us in 1994, 1999, even 2000, is very different to what is available today. So unless we're innovating with the latest technologies, we're probably missing the point. And finally, be practical. I go back to my first point. Don't make perfect the enemy of good. Thank you very much, everybody.